Hello, viewers all over the world. I come to you through Majesty Christian Television Network, and I salute you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Apostle Helen Rudokeno of Rivers of Life Bible Church. So it's always a privilege when I'm, I'm, I'm opportuned to stand before you or to be in your home with you, wherever you are. I'm so privileged to come your way this evening, and thank you for receiving me on any of your um, mobile device, some very, very, or uh, smartphones, and I'm very glad. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, once again, I want to continue the message which I have for this month, which has to do with uh, the significance of the number seven. So as you know, in the Gregorian calendar, that this month, the month of July, is the seventh month. So I want you to tap into the benefits of this month and be able to utilize it to its fullness. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? I thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. And once again, through this medium, may you impact the lives of your people, change lives, and, and heal people who have tuned in, minister to their needs in various dimensions. And at the end, let the glory and honor be given unto you and you alone. We thank you for the strength to bring your word. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Say a big amen. Hallelujah. So I'm talking on the spiritual significance of the number seven. As I made us understand in the previous uh, messages that I have brought, that the number seven uh, talks about totality. It is a number that signifies completion or it signifies perfection. So uh, I want to take my scripture from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 8 from verse 6 to 12. And the Bible tells us here that at the end of the 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark, for the waters we are still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him anymore. So we can see here that uh, when this, uh, the, 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 the flood of Noah happened, uh, then uh, the people were so drowned and Noah and his family survived this uh, destruction of the world through the flood because they heard from God. So all the animals and the, and the human beings that Noah took inside the ark uh, were preserved. And so they had sailed or floated for 150 days. Uh, they were only seeing sea, seeing only the floor, seeing water everywhere, and there was no life. So by this time, everything on earth had been drowned, including trees, the human beings, animals, and whatever you can think about. So the whole earth was only flooded. So we saw here that uh, when the Lord decided to remember Noah, uh, then um, the, the water began to dry up. So Noah wanted to, very eager as well, to maybe come out of the ark, he decided to send uh, the raven. The raven went, and the raven did not come back. Why? Because, you know, ravens love uh, uh, dead beings. So they must have seen lots of deaths and began to feast on them. But uh, after seven days, the Bible said that Noah sent uh, the dove. Noah sent the dove. When the dove went, the dove could not find a, a place because the whole place was still flooded. So the water was still everywhere. So the dove was restless that it came back. So Noah waited again for the next seven days and he sent the dove. When the dove came back, the, the dove came back with a, a fresh leaf of olive in its mouth. So, signifying that life was beginning to spring forth on earth 
again. So it came with that uh, little uh, green olive leaf and it smiled. So while I'm trying to, so that showed, that showed Noah that life was beginning to come back on earth. So after another seven days, Noah sent back the dove and the dove went, I believe everything had become green again on earth. So the dove could not return back to the ark. So Noah realized that it was now time for them to get out of the ark because the water had dried up. So what I'm trying to say here is that you could see that number 777 repeating itself. And it wasn't by accident that Noah was waiting for seven days before he would send the, 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 the raven or send the dove and send the dove again. So that meant to us that that number was a number of perfection. So God works with that number, and uh, within that number lies freshness. It lies restoration. It lies healing. I'm going to buttress this uh, with certain scriptures. So if you have been privileged to see this month, tap into the uniqueness of it. Make a demand to God. In case your life has been flooded, with things that you do not know about, problems that have come into your life. I want you to know that in this seventh month, you will experience dryness. The, 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 the dryness of, of, of all of those problems, they will be dried up. Hallelujah. They will be dried up and then you will experience newness. So anything that has come to you like a flood, anything that has been trying to eat you up, Anything that have rendered you important, anything that have made you you look so pro problematic, you so people don't want to come around you because your life is so flooded up with difficulties. In this seventh month, as you begin to pray, God will do something new. He's going to release freshness around you. Can I hear a big amen? Freshness will come back into your life. Hallelujah! When the flood, when the earth was flooded. Little did we know that, I mean, green or vegetation or freshness will come upon the earth again. So after the whole flood ceased, and then, and then the, 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 the dove was sent, and the dove brought that, that green leaf, that little olive leaf, that shows me that in this month, in the month of seven, or in the number of seven, lies also the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget that the olive tree, represents also the presence of, of, of the Holy Spirit. So in this seven month, I, in the number of seven lies the perfection or lies that which ushers us into God's presence or which brings the Holy Spirit very close to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it is the Holy Spirit who works with this number and the Holy Spirit multiplies its power in this number. So in case you are out there and you are listening and you have a dry spiritual life, I want you to demand something very, very wonderful from God. Ask Him to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to release more of His presence in your life. And ask Him to, that you want to experience the Holy Spirit in His realness. You will see that you will experience Him. Hallelujah. In this very month, God is going to quicken you. God is going to instruct you. God is going to empower you. God is going to bring freshness. Where you used to sleep and you, don't, you are not able to get up and pray, you will receive freshness, ability, enablement to be able to pray to be able to study the word of God, to be able to do what you were not able to do before. Say a big amen. Hallelujah. So I'm here to let you know the freshness is coming to you in this very, very, very morning. Now, i give you another example of what happens, the, the, the uh, spiritual significance of that number. It's not something anyone can take for granted. Many people do not tap into it just because they do not know what it means. But you are getting knowledge. And where you have knowledge, you will no more perish. So you will now take and make use of the remaining days of the month so that you will be able to tap into its spiritual significance. Say, I hear you. Now, in the book of First King, um, chapter 18, uh, we saw from verse 41 to 46, and I read, uh, the, the Bible tells us that, And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of the rushing of rain. 
So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of the Mount Camel, and he bowed himself down on the earth, and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And at the seventh time he said, Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is arising from the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down. Let the rain stop you. Let lest the rain stop you. And in a little while the heaven grew, grew black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gathered up his garment and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So, in this scripture, we, it reminds us of um, how um, famine was in the land of Israel. And this famine was as a result of what... Uh, Elijah had already opened his mouth to speak in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the book of First King chapter seventeen from verse one. And when Elijah the Tishbite went to Ahab and he said to Ahab, As the Lord God, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there will be neither dew nor rain uh, these years except by my word. So that particular word that Elijah went to speak before Ahab really took place. It, it, it manifested. And there was famine in, in, in the whole land of uh, uh, Israel. So this famine was so severe that people were dying and, and uh, animals were dying and uh, uh, the extracts of, uh, of doves uh, and, and the birds have become even more, very expensive that people were, were really eating, looking for a way of survival. So Elijah and the, the rest of uh, the, uh, who was the king, um, the king Ahab was so angry with Elijah, and uh, he was looking for a way, searching for Elijah because Elijah went and hid himself after he went to Ahab and spoke that there would be no rain and there would be nothing like uh, a dew upon the land except by his word. So Elijah went and he was hid by the brook. And when the brook dried up, if you are a good Bible student, you will know that God took him to the woman of Zarephath and the rest of them. So Elijah himself, who spoke this word, was not under famine. But the whole city and the whole, the whole nation, they were under famine. So when it was time now for Elijah to reverse the word that he spoke, uh, you see, Elijah began to pray. He, he began, Elijah went and met Ahab and told Ahab, okay, this is what he's going to do. He said that, that uh, the, 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 the rain is going to fall in the land. But still, uh, uh, Ahab could not really believe Elijah. Elijah told Ahab, just dress yourself, go and eat. Go and just take your shadows and go back and go and eat because there's going to be rain. Why? Because he has decided to, 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 to you know, cancel the words that he has spoken into the, into the atmosphere. He has decided to reverse the curse that he has spoken. But you know, the reversal of this curse took a more magnitude strength. It took more strength than, than, than the strength it took even to say it. So within one second, he went to Ahab, he told Ahab, there will be no rain and no, no dew in this land, but except by my word. But here in First King 18, we saw that it took strength for a for Elijah to reverse the war that he spoke. So what did he do? He went to Mount Carmel and he began to pray. He began to pray. He began to pray. While he was praying, he was telling his servant, he said, go and look. Go and look at the cloud. While he had gone and put his two, put his uh, 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 hands under his uh, knee and was really interceding for Israel, praying and asking God to reverse that war and to send rain. While he was doing all of this, his servant was going, going and looking at the signal, looking at the clouds to know whether there is any sign. So Elijah sent him the first one. Elijah sent him the second one. Elijah sent him the third time. The boy will come. He will tell Elijah, Oh God, there is nothing like uh, any, any, any change in the atmosphere. The weather is still the way it is. I, I don't see any sign at all. So Elijah sent him the fourth time. Elijah sent him the, the, the fifth time. Elijah sent him the sixth time. I believe that Elijah was someone who was very conversant with that number seven. So he knew that 
once he could get up to seven, if he could tarry and he could pray and was able to send that guy to the seventh time, something will surely happen. You see, this was a man that knows the number and knows what that number can do. He knows the fullness of that number, the perfection in that number. He knows that that's a number God hallowed. God respects that number and has done lots of miracles within that number. So Elijah, I believe, was hoping that at least he could pray intensively to reach the 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 the, 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 the seventh time he will send uh, 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 the servant. So the seventh time he sent the servant, the servant went. Behold, cloud has come out. The atmosphere has changed. The Bible said it was as small as that of a tiny hand. So Elijah knew that God had hide him. So he went and he told Ahab, you better begin to go. Otherwise, there will be a heavy downpour that you will not be able to reach your destination. So begin now, begin to run. So as the guy was just doing his prayer, uh, and then the, 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 uh, the, the servant came and was telling him that there was now... Um, a sign of rain, abundant rain that was about to fall, uh, that they, he saw a sign, like a little finger at the, in the cloud. And it brought Elijah and the, the rest of them began to go back to their home because he knew that God has answered him. What, and the Bible made us to understand that it rained, it rained and it rained. So rain was restored in the land. Rain was restored and people were able to, to, to the, the, the famine was ceased and people were able to farm again and to have a normal life. What I'm trying to say is that maybe you've been dried up in the, the, your previous months and your previous years, but in this very, very, very 2014, which is double double of seven you are going to have rest you are going to be restored you are going to have fullness of your vegetation you are not going to experience dryness anymore hallelujah where you have lacked water god is going to give you abundantly in this seventh month where you have lacked the source of that which is life because water is the source of life god is going to give you more than abundantly in this seventh month you have abundant life can i hear a big amen can i hear a big amen so the bible said it rained and rained and rained and rained and rained huh and you know what? Elijah was able, even though Ahab was running with his chariot, Elijah was running by his foot, and he was able, by his legs, he overtake. He was he he outran the horses and chariots of of, of Ahab. Can you imagine that? So they, there was a magnitude, there was a a a, 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 a bundle of strength that wrapped, that wrapped him round. Grace came upon him. To even outrun a half. May grace come upon you in this very seventh month to outrun those who have begun before you. May you succeed above them in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when you tap into the spiritual significance, you will not handle yourself anymore. You will be able to, you know, take, 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 make use of the remaining, the remaining days of, the, of this month and use it and utilize it very well. Hallelujah. Now we also see again here in the book of Second Kings chapter 5, we, we saw that at the number of seven, life was restored to a man that, had a, uh, that was a leper. And if we will read from Second Kings 5 from verse 8 to 14, it said, But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Do you hear that? And your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hands over the place and cure the leper. Are not, are not Abner and Paphat, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. But his servants came near and said to him, 
My father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was made clean. So you see here how God was able, or Elijah, this Elijah, tapped into that number again, knowing fully well that that number that God works with it. So when this leper, who was a warrior, was sent to him to be healed, Elisha did not come out from his home. Elisha just told his servant, go and tell this warrior who, who now had leper, tell him to go to that river Jordan and let him just go and uh, dive in for seven times. Why the number of seven? Why didn't he say dive in for this or five times or dive in for three times? Well, he says seven. Why? Because he knows that seven is the number of perfection. When something has happened and happened and happened and you get to that number seven, it will just take a break. Even if it's an affliction, it will take a break because God honors that number. God works with that number. When something has been chasing you and chasing you or you have been falling and falling and having defeat, defeat, at the seventh time you will have victory. That's why the Bible says, even if a righteous man will fall one, two, three, four, five, six, even the sixth time, yet in the seventh time when he falls, he will arise. Do you not see that? So he could, he could afford to fall and reach five times, but he wouldn't rise. But if he can manage and reach seven, he will rise up again. Hallelujah. So the sickness that afflicted uh, uh, or the leprosy that came to Naaman was eventually cleansed. At the last minute, the last time when he dived in, the seventh time when he dived in, the, he came out thinking that he would just still have his sickness, but he saw that his skin had been transformed. He had been healed from leprosy. He, his skin had become like that of a little child. What does that mean to you? Even if you have some sicknesses which are uncurable, in this seventh month, you will be cured. Even if doctors told you that you will not be healed, in this seventh month, believe God, like Naaman, and you will receive your healing. Can I hear a big amen? You don't even need, who Rabbi Sando, you don't even need to go to all of those big, big hospitals. All you need is just to hook up your faith and, 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 and do the little that the doctor have told you to do, and you will live. You will not die. No man went in first time, second time, third time, kept diving in, thinking that the sixth time, I believe when he dived in, he was full of rage. And then he came out, his body was still the same. And he was preparing himself that if he would go in for the seventh time and nothing happened, he would blow up Elijah and blow up Israel. But unfortunately, God counteracted his thoughts. So he dived in and then he came out being made whole. So with humiliation, he, or humility. He had to go to Elijah, carrying gift, and telling the, uh, Elijah, I didn't know that your God is so powerful like this. You see, that's what people will say about you. That's what they will say in this very moment. If you can only tap into that anointing that is upon this number seven, and you tap into this ritual connection of it, you will have what you want. You will have your life being restored. You will have your life being restored. You will have everything that have left you being restored. Can I hear a big amen? Maybe finally for those of you who are looking for strength and then you are looking for strength. You want to regain your strength. In this very moment you will regain it. Say a big amen. You see, in the book of Judges chapter 16, the Bible tells us about a man who was so strong and that was uh, Samson from, from verse 16 to 21 we will read about Samson let me read it for you and when she pressed him hard with hard words day after day and urged him his soul was vexed to death and he Samson told Delilah all his heart and he said to her a razor has never come upon my head for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb if my head is shaved then my strength will leave me and i shall become weak and be like any other man when delilah saw that he had told her all his heart she sent and called the loss of the philistine saying come up again for he has told me all his heart then the lords of the philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands she made him sleep on her knees and she called a man she called a man and had him shave off the seven market seven locks 
of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength has left him. Do you see that? <laughs> so the strength of Samson was behind the seven dreadlocks he had. The, the, the dreadlocks he had wasn't one, two, three, but seven. Because the Lord must have given him the, 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 the spiritual meaning of that. So he had seven solid dreadlocks. And that was where the source of his strength was. So those of you who do not have strength, I want you to know that God is able to visit you with strength in this seven month. He is able to impact strength upon you. If you can get up in this seven month, begin to pray at the seventh hour, you will see that you will receive strength that will restore all that the devil has taken away from you. I just hope that you have been blessed by this word. I just hope that God will strengthen you and empower you so that you can walk with this, that's his, uh, the, so the, the spiritual significance of this month and run with it. So that you will be restored in your health, you'll be restored in your finances, you'll be restored also in your prayer life. If only you can arise and do some of these things and put them in practice, you will see that every wall around you will come down. I end up with this. In the book of Joshua, well, chapter 6, the Bible spoke also about the, 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 the wall of Jericho and how the, 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 the children of Israel had to march around the wall of Jericho. They had to march around their city for seven times. And, this, and the last day, which was the seventh day, they had to march for seven solid times. Hallelujah. When they marched seven times with the seven trumpets, they blew it with the seven praise. When the seven, with the seven praise, I beg your pardon, blew the seven trumpets, the Bible said the walls of Jericho came down. Any wall that is around you will collapse. That which have been hindering you and your family, they will collapse. When you get up at the hour of seven, at this seven month, and begin to sing some praises unto God, you will see walls of sicknesses and poverty, they will collapse in your very eyes. And you will only give God thanks and praise. I believe this has ministered to you. I want to hear from you concerning how these messages have blessed you. And I hope to be with you again on Friday, uh, this very week we are entering. So my contacts are there on the, on the, on the, on the tele, uh, television, just on the screen. Take them and uh, give me a call. Tell me how I may continue to be a blessing to you. I hope to see you again. Bye and bye.